Have you ever used the computers in the house? No. Ever? No, we don't use the computers in the house. Okay. We've had to seize them under warrant. Curtis Wayne Sackmullen was born on September 3rd, 1980. He grew up in the city of Maple Ridge in the province of British Columbia in Canada with his two younger brothers, John and Eric. His parents owned a house on a leafy section of 248th Street in Maple Ridge from 1983 to 2007. He attended Harry Hooge Elementary School and Thomas Haney Secondary. Some on Facebook remembered him as a good friend whom they would always go off-riding with in Jeeps on the weekends. In May 2004, the Sagmoan parents and the three brothers bought the farm near Salmon Arm. In 2007, the parents sold their family home in Maple Ridge and presumably moved to the farm on Salmon River Road. Also in 2007, Curtis bought his own condo on Gilger Hill in Maple Ridge. Six years after buying his condo, the banks foreclosed because the mortgage wasn't being paid. That year, Curtis moved into a trailer RV that was parked on his parents' farm. In 2013, the year of the foreclosure, there were two assaults against women on a trail near their foreclosed condo. One of the assault victims described a masked man approaching and groping them inappropriately while they were on an evening walk on the Trans-Canada Trail. Curtis was indeed already evicted from the condo and was living on his parents' farm at the time of those incidents. On the morning of August 28th, neighbors found a gray Mazda with its engine still running crashed on a small bridge near the Sagmoan farm and two pink slippers lying on the road nearby. Bare footprints were found in the sandy soil leading away from the car, which seemed hastily abandoned. One of the neighbors told the media in an interview, they were far apart, so she must have been running for her life. He immediately phoned the police after his discovery. The police discovered that the victim was an escort that was responding to a Craigslist inquiry for her ad offering intimate companionship. The escort told the police that the night prior she had showed up to the Salmon River farm where Curtis and his family resided. When she arrived at the gates outside the farm, they were closed, so she couldn't drive in. Just as she stepped out of the car to check the gates, a man approached her. She told the police he was masked and armed with a shotgun, so she got back in the car, panicked, and sped off. She then described hearing a gunshot and a loud thump coming from the rear of her vehicle. Police found shell fragments in the tires of the crashed Mazda and assumed that the masked man had shot at her. A week later, on September 5th, police found Curtis Sagmon with methamphetamine near the farm. Six weeks later, Sagmon was charged in connection with the August incident. He faced charges of disguising his face with intent to commit an offense, intentionally discharging a firearm, pointing a firearm, uttering threats, careless use or storage of a firearm, possessing a weapon for a dangerous purpose, and possession of a controlled substance. The very next day, on October 21st, police obtained a search warrant and descended on the farm. Later that evening, they announced they found the human remains of Tracy Genreau. Tracy, who was 18 years old when she went missing, had struggled with drug use and street life, but was trying to turn things around as her parents described. She worked as an escort before her disappearance in May of that year. She was described as quick-witted and vibrant by her friends. Her father said in an interview, in quotes, she was awesome, she was always having fun, always making funny, crazy little sounds. After the discovery of her remains, Curtis was urgently brought in for questioning. Well, there's a few things going on, yeah. Curtis, but you do have a history of... Uh, what? It's called like maybe four, four escorts in my life, so that's a history. Okay, well, thank you for telling me that. Thank you. Five minutes ago, you were denying having any history. Well, that's <laughs> right, right, no, I don't, like, we, we, we talked... So that's what we're trying to figure out here, Curtis. We're trying to figure out if you're guilty of this. You know, like, we're trying to I out. haven't called any escorts to my house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. I've never met anyone here for a few years. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got a few pictures to show you here as well. I wanted to show you this ad. Do you recognize that ad? After Curtis's cell phone was obtained and searched, it turned out that he did view the exact ad that Detective Rich is showing him here. Later in court, the prosecution stated that Curtis lied at this moment, but the defense argued that while he may have viewed the ad in the past, he didn't recognize it when the detective showed it to him. 
This shows that the framing of certain questions is crucial to the outcome of every case. So one thing that we're going to, to have to do when we search your phone, um, we're going to look for any type of application that you may have used that would alter the appearance of a phone number, that kind of thing. Do you ever hear spoofing? Where if you use your phone to dial another one, but somehow manipulate the phone number to appear differently? Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So we're going to be examining your phone for that. Have you ever used that type of application? one of those applications. And I think you used it when you contacted I never threatened anybody and I have a fire in front of your heart. Okay. Did you meet with that night? I haven't met him. Well, we discussed. Like, your I asked, I asked, like, I if I can rest first here. Okay. I'm tired of bank. Mm -hmm. I want to go to bed. Mm -hmm. what you told me, uh, Curtis, is that when she arrived at she noticed that the gate is locked. And when she got out of the gate, or when she got out of her car to well, unlock the gate, somebody appeared behind her. And he had his face masked, and he was wearing some type of and she described the male that was holding his holding a gun. He came out of the woods. Um, now, initially, the male wasn't pointing the gun at her. He was pointing it up in the air. Here are the fragments inside of the tire. So it means to me that at some point, the firearm was discharged. And some of the local residents, they heard a fire being discharged. The people that live on that road. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day here, we're not investigating murder, okay? That's not what we're investigating. She's... This, this escort is fine. She, had, she wasn't shot. She was a little scared. But she's not dead. I haven't discharged the fire. Mm -hmm. I haven't, so. Okay. So, where is that? I'd like to go to bed. Well, if, you, if that's true, you know, we'll find that evidence out. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to determine that you haven't fired anything. Is there any evidence of anyone else, that, like any other escorts, that we're going to find out similar information? Have you threatened anyone? I haven't threatened anyone. Okay. So I look like a piece of shit to you. So I'm trying to keep to myself. Mm -hmm. I believe you. But something happened somewhere. I've Just never seen that girl in my life. So. Okay. So who would be inviting escorts up to that property?
that specific property. I need to wait on. Have you ever used the computers in the house? No. Ever? No, we don't use the computers in the house. Okay. We've had to seize them under warrant. Hey! We're here to talk about it. You losing your cool is not helping. I'm sorry, I've been trying. Like I got, I, I... Put the chair up right. Sorry. Sorry. What happened again? Curtis, you're upset right now because of one night in jail. Are you aware of the, the sentencing for a firearms offense? We're taking this really seriously. The minimum sentence for a firearms offense is four years in jail. Do you realize that? How are you going to react if you have to go to jail? We're trying to provide you an opportunity here to get ahead of this and provide your side of the story. My son had referred to the firearm was last year. Did you meet this girl? I didn't meet a girl. Notice Curtis's response to this question. He vaguely says he did not meet a girl when asked if he met the specific girl that posted the ad. Advanced pathological liars tend to be great at disguising their lies using vague terminology to answer questions. I do not meet a girl. Did you text her? Truthfully, did you text her? Yes or no? I texted a girl. Okay, thank you. Thank you for telling me the truth. Do you want to shake my hand? Sure. Thank you. And I never fired a firearm. Okay. I never threatened anyone. Notice the immediate response uttered after he once again vaguely admits that he texted a girl. It's as if he needs to reiterate his innocence to the charges after admitting something to the detective that he himself knows could incriminate him. So what did happen? Just story in my life. Can I go back in my room? You don't want to talk about this girl anymore? I don't want to talk about because your phone, you can't, you can't. I can't get to work. I can't, I got, I was supposed to go to work without a phone. How am I get to get the phone call to go to work? Can they call your mom's place? Like, no, like, and I was going to go back to my room. There, I told you what you wanted to know. I told you I was embarrassing. Now you can want more, like, no. So, all what I want to know, I want to know. No, please. The whole story of what happened. The whole story of what happened. About what? He said, no, talk to you first. So I talked to you first. Right? We, had, we shook hands. Mm -hmm. But when I asked him, please can I go back to my room? Uh, we would. But what was it we were talking about? Hi, Curtis. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. I'm Corporal Kovacs. I work with Rich. Can you give me a couple minutes? To talk to you guys? No. Just a couple? No. Because I've been watching what's been going on here. And uh, so I watch in another room, okay? So. So, yeah, no, you two are both going to have a good laugh at it. No, not yeah. at all. No. Yeah. It's just great things. Curtis, I've heard a lot worse, okay? What, what I heard today, that, that I'm not laughing about anything, okay? I understand you live in a rural area. You don't have a lot of people around you. I don't even have a vehicle. So it makes you very limited on what you can right. do out there, right? It means I don't have a vehicle. It's because I'm trying to help you guys out. And I got a 
Curtis was arrested and charged. While investigators did find Tracy's remains on the 24-acre farm he resided on, they were still unable to link that discovery to Curtis with any certain incriminating evidence. Police also began reconducting searches looking for the disappearances of four other women within a 50-kilometer radius of the Salmon River farm. Three of those women had histories of being in sex trade and all four had been reported missing between 2015 to 2016. They hoped to find evidence from those searches that would link to Curtis. Curtis's trial was delayed numerous times due to certain circumstances involved in the case. At one point, his attorney failed to show up to his trial and reportedly told courts he didn't want to represent Curtis. On December 19, 2019, Curtis was sentenced to 24 months in prison for which he had already had a pretrial credit of serving more than three years since Canadian law credits pretrial time served at one and a half times the actual time served. He was later released that day. Anti-violence against women protesters staged demonstrations in front of the Vernon Courthouse pretty much every time he appeared. After a hearing that month, about two dozen protesters rallied outside the courthouse to oppose violence against women. They demanded Curtis be refused bail, though they acknowledged the police have not named him in relation to the discovery of the remains. Curtis had numerous parole conditions placed on him for 36 months, including he have no contact with sex trade workers, no access to the internet, could not be in possession of weapons, and must abstain from drugs and alcohol. His phone bill had to be mailed to his parole officer every month, which shows his texts and call logs. In December of 2020, Curtis faced a new criminal charge. He was charged with assaulting a peace officer in an October 29th incident in the Spalamchin area. The charge was sworn by prosecutors on December 16th. Curtis made his first appearance in Salmon Arm Court December 22nd. His trial is expected to be scheduled later this year, and many fear he'll walk free again due to the fact that he has 155 days in pretrial time served credits remaining. To this day, Tracy's death has not been linked to anyone, and the four other missing women in the small rural area have not been found.